What's happening guys? I hope you're all doing very well. It is good to be back and I know admittedly it has been a long time since the last video. It just means we've got an awful lot to discuss in this video so it is going to be relatively fast paced. A hell of a lot to talk about so we're going to talk about Bitcoin on the macroscopic scale, looking at the smaller time frames also and we're going to be justifying why things are generally looking very bullish right now which you might have gathered from the thumbnail and the title to this video. But as I say, a lot to discuss. So without further ado, let's jump on in. So last time we spoke, we were all the way down here. Things were looking very bearish. We were beneath our key bias indicators, mainly being our 20 week simple moving average, but also the meeting line of a major pitchfork, which we're going to bring up very shortly. OK, so shortly after the last video, I was tweeting, giving an update that things were actually turning around and Bitcoin was looking strong again, as I mentioned in this tweet here. But basically mentioning that the 20 week simple moving average sets the bias it's as simple as that okay so basically we are currently above the 20 week simple moving average so things are generally looking good as i say we're going to be looking at that in just a moment but we are just going to flick through some very very important indicators so first of all we want to talk about the elliott wave scenario okay so this is the blx chart now there are variable counts and we eliminate various counts as time goes on. Now, previously speaking, uh, I was considering a count which was this wave one up to here, uh, wave two, three, and then the wave four, I was calling this W, X, Y, which would have meant us coming down a lot further, maybe to around 20K, that kind of region, okay? Um, but as I say, things are now looking very bullish here. So we have to uh, kind of switch that up a little bit and alter the counts. Now there's a, still a couple of ways of looking at it. So I still maintain, I'm looking at this as a one, two, three. You can then argue this is a four finished here. And then this is a one, two, three, We're doing some kind of four, and then we go on for a fifth. Okay, that count I'm not too fond of, to be honest. Um, I have obviously considered it now that we are quite limited with the number of counts that we can have. But I don't like this bit here. It does not look impulsive to me at all. So as I say, with that count, it means that this is a one, this is a two, and this is a three. So the start of the three is not looking impulsive to me at all, okay? So for me, I'm looking at this. This is my preferred count. I would look at this as a one, two, three, and then the way four is a triangle, okay? So it's an A, B, C, D, and E. And then there's a five wave count up to here to make the one. So this is the one of our major five. And then we're making the wave two. And I'll talk about what kind of two we can play out here. I'll explain how I'm looking at a running flat play out for the wave two. Okay, so this being an A, we're going up in a B, and then we're gonna come down for a C. So that would make you wave two. And then we go up for a three, four, five. Okay, that is my preferred count as it stands. Um, so just moving on, you can see here, this is how, this is the volume profile, which I just wanted to highlight. You can see we've got below average volume right here, very low volumes, not something you want to see if we're supposedly in a uh, impulsive move to the upside. So I've been saying all along, all of this is looking incredibly corrective, which means we're probably going to get quite a big sell off at some point, though. It doesn't mean we're going to take out these lows here, okay? So these 30k lows, not necessarily going to get taken out. We can get a running flat, yeah? So which is what I'm leaning towards. Because crypto is a very strong asset, I think we're probably going to print that running flat uh, picture. But just be mindful, this is likely to be a B wave. This is very, very overlappy going higher. And it will have a, probably a dramatic C wave at the end of it, taking price to the downside. So we've got to be very mindful taking profits at every level of potential resistance and not getting too carried away because i do think a lot of people will end up getting stopped out not realizing that this is looking very very uh corrective going higher as you can see they've got overlapping waves when you zoom in on it you've got overlapping waves and you've got very low volume right here next thing to talk about the very important 20 week simple moving average so you can see going all the way back how well it has held on to the price action um, using it really as support or resistance so you can see excellent support here flip to resistance as we went down back to support going higher resistance once more now we did kind of the price did kind of weave in and around the moving average here and this seems to be what we've kind of done once more here now i mentioned you know when we were down here it was looking weak we were beneath the 20 week simple moving average 
uh, so I was concerned but then we got back above the pitchfork median line which I'll talk about in a moment and things started to look good again uh, there was a little scare just recently as we kind of dipped down beneath the um, 20 week simple moving average but we never got a daily or weekly close beneath it so it's been held, holding very nicely so that is what you want to see in a healthy bull market you want to see us holding on to this 20 week simple moving average okay so that's that and then we've got this very important pitch for median line so to draw this you want to be on the log scale it's an original peach sorry pitchfork so it's a very steep gradient we've got our first second and third pivots and i want to see us stay above this median line so as i said previously i was concerned when we were beneath the median line getting back above was the conviction i wanted to see to tell me that this is still a strong market uh sorry it was back here where we came beneath the median line so we got back above here we had a bit of a scare once more here but it was the 20 week simple moving average which held us up held us up here uh gave us that lifeline and it was when we got back above the median line for me that was the um reason to switch back to bullish once more okay so very important pitchfork and as you can see it's the higher time frame setting the higher time frame bias here and we're now back above the median line so on the subject of median lines i just want to show you this one also so this is again on the daily time frame first second third pivots log scale original pitchfork and it's the lower warning line which we did not break so we're still following this upward trend very very nicely but here you can see now we're a bit more zoomed in you can see the nature of the waves that looks very three wave-ish going up we then come down pretty deep and then look at these waves overlapping again and again for me this is all kind of b wave territory here this is all looking at like one massive b wave so this was your a we're going up in the b and then we'll come down in the c as i say i'm looking at the running flat scenario okay so b would likely come up to higher levels than the start of A, which means we're going to take out that 65K point. And we'll talk about targets in just a moment. Okay, so keeping to the subject of pitchforks, we've got this smaller pitchfork. So I was mentioning to the group how once we broke above, above this upper median line and got back above our major pitchfork median line, this at this point around 45 46k this was the key sign that we wanted to see to tell us that this market was switching to a, a more bullish momentum once more okay so uh moving on very important camera pivot so starting with the weekly time frame so here each period represents a year and looking at the last four years they have been hugely useful i mentioned them in all my previous videos um but yeah very healthily staying above the r4 here you can see no weekly closes beneath the r4 very healthy market as you can see as shown by these camera pivots and then if we come down to the daily time frame again once more so we're seeing bullishness across the board on the camera pivots so here on the daily candles you've got a monthly period being shown here and what was important is that we didn't break the s4 for the month of september you can see we held on to the s4 and what was even more impressive is not only did we stay above the s4 but we closed the month with this candle here um, above the s3 as you can see so very good and as a result we just absolutely shot higher now we're back above the r4 showing a healthy bull trend as you can see now we can come down to the one hourly time frame and on this time frame each range represents a week so last week you see very good double support off of the s3 finished the week above the r4 again showing really good strength as a result we've just been shooting higher through this week well above the r4 now and i would want to see this week was finish above the r4 which i think is quite likely to be honest um all right so let's talk about where we can expect price to come up to now so i'm looking at this as the a and then this is the b going higher you can see the very overlapping waves looking very very corrective indeed i've spoken about how it's going up on low volume um so i'd call this a going up in a b and then we come down in a c i'm not going to talk about targets for c until b has confirmed itself uh, but b you've got to be a little bit careful first of all because we are at a key point of resistance here, which I think we're going to take out pretty soon. Okay, but it is the 0.786 retracement level, as you can see, this blue line here. This is where we're currently sat. Now, in my opinion, this cause here is going to relate to much greater effect, and we're going to take out this point. There is another bit of resistance at the 0.886, but it's not as considerable, it's not as considerable a fib level as the 0.786 or even the 0.618. Okay, so but there are some key doji candles around here 
which can offer some horizontal levels of resistance. So that is another level to be careful of at 59K. All right, so once we get through that, the route higher should be a lot easier, okay? I, in my impression, we do push through this uh, quite nicely, but it is resistance nevertheless. It's something to be mindful of. Now, I don't think we're going to get a double top pattern. I don't think it's going to be a regular flat where you get an A, a B, and then a C coming down to the level of A. That would be a regular flat scenario. It's not so common within crypto. You're more likely to see your running flats, especially in an asset that has a tendency to you know, be very volatile, move very aggressively. Very often you do get these kind of running flat scenarios. And that's why I'm leaning towards the running flat scenario where the more modest target is actually a move up to the 1.236 Fib projection. Okay, so in order to draw these, you want to be on log scale, take a Fib retracement tool from your high, draw it down to your low, and you get your Fib projections to the up, upper side. So you've got your 79K here. This is the target that I'm leaning towards, I think is most probable at present. But then it, there is that possibility of reaching 88 or closer to 89K here, and then you've got 108K all the way up here. All of which are possible, as I say, I've, I've been, I'm setting a more modest target here of 79K. Um, so yeah, these are basically the targets. This is how I generally tar make targets with my B waves of running flats. Um, so yeah, this is what I'm looking out for. Uh, so yeah, that's the most likely target in my opinion, as it stands. Uh, but there is that slight obstacle here at around 59k that we do have to be a little bit wary of. And of course, you know, we I do want to see price push through this 55k level as well because it is a resistance point in itself. So we'll see how price reacts there. Invalidation of this whole bear, uh, bullish scenario is us coming back beneath our 20 week simple moving average. Okay, it is as simple as that. That is your higher time frame bias as well as your major pitch for median line. Okay, so these are your projections. This is the reason for the 79k target um, and it's because of the fact that we're looking at this as a B wave that I'm looking at these particular FIB targets. Okay, next up. So I just want to talk about how Bitcoin is actually showing relative strength to the US indices. So this is compared to the NASDAQ. We're here on the daily time frame again. So you can see here we've made a high, we've made a higher high whilst you can see on the NASDAQ, it's simply not the case. Yes, we've seen a little bit of a turn up here on the NASDAQ, but it's not been anywhere near as aggressive as what we've seen in crypto. You can see shooting higher already. You know, we've not made that new high here recently on the NASDAQ. So we are seeing that relative strength. And I, I do want to talk about stocks as well, because I do think stocks are very, very concerning indeed. I think they're incredibly overbought. You know, there's talks about... Um, the Fed not increasing the debt ceiling. Uh, I believe they have now delayed the decision to December, which is a little bit of relief for the stock markets. Might allow another pump higher just until December, and then we'll see what happens. Um, but it's deeply concerning. They're running out of options to pump this market, the, the, the stock markets. And as I say, they're very overbought, as I'll show you in the next couple of uh, slides. So um, yeah, as you can see, we're seeing the relative strength within crypto, which I think is going to happen. I do believe crypto is going to be our safe haven asset during any major drawback within stocks. I don't think bonds are in a position anymore to offer that safe haven asset because obviously we're, interest rates are at pretty much 0%. Okay, so now just pulling up the NASDAQ. So this is a pitchfork holding the NASDAQ, demonstrating how overbought it is uh, all the way back from uh, the financial crisis all the way back here. And yeah, so this is the start of your, your pitchfork for this bull run. And you can see, sorry, this is actually the S&P 500. NASDAQ will be shown next. So this is the S&P 500. As you can see, very, very overbought, hitting up a warning line. The upside relative to downside, is it's just not there. I don't see what what is going to draw investors in, especially when they're talking about defaults on the, on the, um, on the from the Fed. I don't see it. I think all the kind of ingredients are there for a potential sell off. It's not there yet. You know, we haven't broken the uptrend, but it's getting concerning. So that's the S&P. Nasdaq paints a very similar picture. So here's a pitchfork following the financial crisis 2008 to 2007 2008. So first, second, third pivots. This is a shift pitchfork log scale. Um, so again, we're, we're testing the upper warning line. Yeah, so you're running out of upside. Yes, you might just keep running into this upper warning line. As I say, we could get another high. 
another all-time high. We're getting this kind of wedge-like structure up here, which is just about clinging on to price, but we are dipping out of it. Um, so as I say, it's looking concerning here for stocks. Um, this is just a quick look at TLT. So this is your 20-year treasuries. You can see the bond market really selling off here. So failing to get above the upper median line, now back beneath the 0 0.5 line of this pitchfork. Um, deeply concerning. I see us heading into the median line before long, taking out this low and probably coming down, I reckon, as a, at least as far as your lower median line here. I'm expecting a big, big sell-off here in bonds. Um, then we can have a little look at real estate as well. It's not painting a great picture in my opinion. The way I look at it, that was impulsive coming down. This whole move, when you see a very overlappy move going higher and higher, think B wave, okay? Think correction and yeah, the way I'm looking at it is as a B wave. Could it go higher? Yes, possibly. This is the linear scale by the way. And this is a Fib retracement tool from here down to here. So that's your high to low. We've already tagged the 1.236. Yes, potentially we could go up to the 1.382, but as I say, stocks are looking weak. Uh, real estate follows stocks in a very similar fashion. They are a, a pretty much a, an investment vehicle. Uh, and so I do expect real estate would sell off as well if there was trouble with stocks. Uh, and as I say, it could be very aggressive indeed. It could be in a C-wave fashion, which is generally impulsive to the downside. So you can see this blue trend line, which has been kind of joining the highs here. We did kind of go a little bit above it on a little bit of a hype run here but now we're back beneath it it's looking concerning there is this pitchfork that i've been following and again we're falling down within that pitchfork um so yeah not going to go into too much detail on that but as a, as you can see we are at very high levels within real estate also so it's it's not painting a great picture so then just to cap things off this is gold here on the weekly time frame. I would say gold is really at a very pivotal level. I'm not confident to say whether this is going up or down just yet, but I think we're going to find out very, very soon. We've got two excellent pitchforks here. First, second, third pivots for this modified shift pitchfork log scale. And you can see we tested the upper warning line absolutely wonderfully, found resistance, came down to the median line, double test of it, triple test of it, just flirting with the median line now. In my opinion, I've got the impression that we are probably going to come down, but it's not yet confirmed. We've got a smaller pitchfork here. It's, again, it's a modified shift, first, second, third pivots, log scale coming down. And yeah, you can see we're just beneath the upper median line of this pitchfork, which is just about keeping it down for now but i want to see what happens i basically want to see how price reacts to this major pitch what median line coming beneath that i would be looking for shorts on gold whilst we stay above it there's the potential for long but i don't like the elliott wave count to support any longs that's why i'm more interested on the potential shorts here on gold okay so that pretty much wraps it up uh for the other markets as i say this was bitcoin currently sat at a bit of resistance there's this doji here which is offering dojis are always very important to monitor um so with regards to it's a basically a previous level of value and so this is what is currently holding us up there are further dojis overhead and as i said that's around the 0.886 fib around 59k as you can see around here and here so around yeah, 50, 59k around that point you've got to be careful as well that's the next point of resistance after which there could be a good run into 79k as i say for all the reasons i've mentioned invalidation is coming down beneath your 20 week simple moving average it's as simple as that so hopefully this video has been of value i know it's been a while leave a like if you have enjoyed this video um if you want to hear more from the channel obviously sub make sure you subscribe so you can be notified and if you are interested in kind of you know furthering your knowledge at all i have kind of pieced pieced it all together on my website so wave618.com links are in the description to the video or you could type in your search bar just simply wave618.com brings you to my website here you can see all my products all the way down here so you've got my full educational course you've got my weekly updates on cryptology that's your top 15 market caps but a very good st and if you click on any of these you'll get further information about what is involved in all of them uh, but if this is a good place to start it's the free educational material so lots to keep you going right there so that might be worth checking out so as i say hope you found value in today's video until next time guys take care